Hello and welcome to another video on my channel. Today I would like to explain the DAPS handover and the DAPS. This is by far one of the most sticky acronyms this ReachBP has ever invented. So let's first have a look at the problem that is going to be resolved. As we know, all LTE and new radio handovers until release 15 are hard handovers. This means the UE performs a random access procedure to establish the radio connection in a target cell after it already disconnected from the source cell. And due to this, we have a very short interruption of the user plane transport. So a typical mobility interruption time, as it is called, is between 30 and 60 milliseconds. However, for ultra reliable low latency communication services, this interruption of the user plane transmission is unacceptable. So the solution is straightforward that during the handover, the mobile remains connected to two cells, to the source cell and the target cell simultaneously. Very similar uh, to the soft handover that we know from UMTS. Here in case of the DAPS handover, PDCP packets are transmitted uh, simultaneously on the two radio links uh, to the mobile. So it's the same PDC packet, but the underlying lower layers, physical layer, MAC and RLC, they are configured for two separate cells, two separate radio links. And this configuration is called a dual active protocol stack or DAPS. So the underlying principle of the DAPS handover is that there is a continued transmission and reception in the source cell after UE received the handover command. We have a simultaneous reception of user data from source and target cell on the downlink and the uplink transmission of the user plane data is switched to the target cell after the completion of the random access procedure. So what kind of signaling procedures we can see in the virtual or open RAN related to the DAPS handover? The handover itself is triggered when the mobile sends a new radio RC measurement report that indicates that a new a better neighbor cell uh, was found. Um, when the central unit for the control plane of the GNOB receives this measurement report, it starts uh, F1 UE context setup towards the target distributed unit. And in addition to the F1 UE context, also an E1 bearer context is established between the central unit for the control plane and the central unit for the user plane. This is really a second and additional E1 bearer context. And if you look into the bearer context setup request matches, you will see an information element that is telling you that there's a DAPS request configuration uh, required here. So after these two contexts have been established, the central unit for the control plane sends the new radio RSC connection reconfiguration, the handover command to the mobile. Also here for every dedicated radio bearer, it is defined if a DAPS configuration is required. So after the mobile received the handover command, the downlink data transmission from the target site starts. In the next step, the random access procedure is performed. And when it's successfully completed, the transport and the radio resources related to the source cell can be deleted and the DAP handover is successfully completed. It must also be mentioned that it's possible that DAP handovers are involving the XN and the N2 interface. So XNAP and NGAP handover request messages, they also may have such a DAP request information element as we have seen it for the E1 bearer context setup request message. If the UE detects any problems during the DAP handover, it will send a new radio RC failure information back to the CU CP and uh, this failure information message has a course code that indicates a DAPS failure. So this is or this happens in case of an unsuccessful handover. And this is all you need to know about the DAPS handover. Thank you and bye bye.